Now, how to use the burette. Excuse me. Okay. Now, most people assume that because you're right-handed, you use your right hand for the burette. You don't. The reason is, that, by the way, this is a safety burette. Notice the plastic. Okay, most burettes are made out of glass. So if you're holding it with your right hand and twisting the knob, you can actually apply quite a bit of torsion and snap the glass. Okay, so instead of using your right hand and threatening it, left hand, surround it. That way it can't break. Okay? The other reason is that, have you ever tried swirling a flask with your hand that you don't use? I'm right-handed. You try swirling with your left hand, you feel really unco. Okay? So you're unco and you're trying to break your glass. Swap your hands around. Okay? You can control easy, it's protective, and you can swirl. Okay? Now, if we look at this over here, this we're assuming is roughly one mole per litre, and that's one mole per litre. Okay, so if we have 25 mils of our analyte, we would expect to use roughly 25 mils from our burette. Okay? Now you can sit down, it will stand up, it doesn't really matter. When you're conducting your titration, the most important thing to do, especially for your first run, leave it, I'll get it later. The most important thing to do for your first run is actually not to watch the volume, but to watch the colour in the flask. Okay? While it's running, you swell, you conduct, you just do it quickly, okay? It's your first rough one. You turn it off, give it a swell. Now, because we've got a large excess of base in here, and we're adding acid, at first you don't see any colour change, okay? The solution's blue the whole time. As you get closer to the end point of the indicator, the pH at which the indicator changes colour, all right, you'll note that if you look in there, when the liquid hits, when the acid hits the base, you get a little yellow patch in the middle. When that starts to happen, okay, you know that you're getting closer to the equivalence point. All right, just remember your graph. Volume, pH. We started off with the base, so the pH was up here, roughly around 13. Okay. The pH does this. So we're moving along in this direction. When those yellow, when that yellow solution floats around for a while, it means you're getting close to the drop-off. Okay, so you swell. You just check the volume. I've put in about 17 mils. I have a look. Can you just confirm the middle is yellow? Can you see that? Okay, I'll give it a swell, it disappears. It means we're close to the end point, and the end point is roughly the same as the equivalence point. Can you see the yellow in there? A swell, it disappears. So add more. Wait, 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 let me see the yeah, I'll wait. So add some. See oh, it turns yellow in the middle? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're getting closer and closer to the equivalence point. Now this is a rough one. We're at 20 and a bit mils. Okay, so the first one is always rough. To give you an idea of what the end point should look like anyway. Okay. So you add a small amount, small squirt, swell. Okay. You'll note after a while, you add it and the, and the yellow stays there longer and longer. We're really getting close to the end point now. Did you see that? Yeah. But notice how it turned. Whoa. Oh, you went on my <laughs> right? So your first one is always rough. Okay, so you see how easy it is to go from blue to yellow. Okay, and if you add a little bit more, you see it goes completely yellow. So in fact, we're very close to the end point and the equivalence point. Now for your rough experiment, you need to record the volume. We look up here, and you should get it to the closest 0.05 mils. By the way, each drop is 0.05 mils. Okay, so you get down here, it reads 21.95. <coughs> so you write that down. The good news is that you have to do your titration several times, okay, to confirm that your result is correct. And also, if you go over, there is something called back titration. Okay, every drop of water from a pipette or a burette or a eyedropper is 0.05 mils. Okay, so you can get an eyedropper. I don't have one on me, so I'll cheat. So every drop of sodium hydroxide from here will be 0.05 mil. Okay, you shouldn't use a pipette, you should use an eyedropper, I don't have one on me. 
But if I take one drop, okay, give it a swirl. Aww. Wait. <laughs> yeah? So at a 0.05 mil, so we're more than 0.05 mil beyond. Notice the end point is the point at which the indicator changes color permanently. See how it changes color, then it takes about 10 seconds for the equilibrium to be reached. Okay, give it a swirl. That should make it go blue and stay blue. <laughs> no. Oh. There you go. That's the end point. Okay? Okay, that's green. All right, that's the end point. And you'll notice it took two drops to go back. Okay? So, two drops removed from that. So, our real answer was actually 21.85 mils. Okay, and that was a rough titration. We need to do that again. But using this data, let's do the calculation. Mm -hmm.